I'm your host, Effie Pilarino, and today's episode is part of a journey to shape a conversation around breaking the silos and what it means for decision makers in Switzerland. Never before has decision making had such a huge domino effect within organizations and its broader ecosystem. Never before have we all felt the need for a more harmonious yet resilient organization and ecosystem. How and what kind of smart technology can we use to take care of all stakeholders and create a cohesive and sustainable economy, much like the vision of the World Economic Forum team? Today, I have the pleasure to discuss these topics with Nicolas Burer, the Managing Director of Digital Switzerland, and Hans-Peter Kipfer, Oracle Country Manager. Welcome both. Good morning, Effie. Good morning, Effie. You both have a very broad and diverse um, um, exposure and, and insights and understanding into what Swiss companies are doing, what are the opportunities and the challenges, and even a glo more global perspective. So, I'd like to start with you, Hans Peter. I mean, we all know that executives at every level, where they're, whether it's the chief financial officer, the, the CEO, the chief operations officer, or the decision makers, are looking for ways to access data easily and securely and with increased agility. So, how can technology? help them do that, always keeping in mind uh, security. Yeah, I think uh, it's, it's obviously very true what, what you were saying. I think, you know, there are people who, who claim, you know, data to be the new oil. I, I, I don't think that's true because oil is very much finite. Its existence, as we know, whereof data is almost infinite when we uh, especially are looking forward. Um, I think it's very important to realize and also to acknowledge that kind of one does not go without the other. We cannot have access while, or we cannot grant access, while at the same time we would not treat security with the highest possible priority. So access without security does not work. So therefore, you know, if we look at how we handle those two topics, granting access, but at the same time um, uh, applying, uh, you know, uh, applicable security measures, we build security immediately into our products. And I think this is the easiest way to treat it. Uh, security should not be treated separately. Security should not be seen as a separate topic or domain. Uh, we must, um, always think and, and prioritize security equally with the function that we are looking for in this context, access to data. Great, so what I'm hearing from, from you that um, everything has to be built in, uh, not an add-on, and um, there is no compromise or, or trade-off. That's, Very much that's so. how it is, yes. Nicholas, you, you have um, a, a broad, um, a view of um, you know the Swiss sector cross industry. What comes to mind when you hear breaking the silos um, and and technology? How to use technology uh, to sort of make sure that all stakeholders uh, ha are treated fairly. So my opinion is, let's face it, and right now after COVID, um, I guess, I believe breaking the silos will be even more important. And technology and digitalization, you know, it's, it's like a fusion of all elements. Everything is getting closer to each other, hardware from software, cross industry, and as we call it also, multi-stakeholders, so which means 
government, regions, economy, and, and civil society will need to work more together because many game changer topics will need all stakeholder groups. And I believe um, the winners, if I might talk about countries, for example, the winners in the next years are the ones who are really able to break the silos, to work cross industry and multi stakeholders, government with economy, with academia, for example. So I think the time is coming to break them. Very interesting, because often when, when we talk about uh, breaking silos, we, we're thinking within a big organization, you know, the departments and so on. But you are talking about a much broader uh, ecosystem approach where obviously there's more silos than within an organization. Um, Hans Peter, we have tools and processes, but you know the complexity as as you uh, already mentioned is ever increasing data the supply of data is is exponentially increasing so what is your recommendation how to approach uh, this complexity yeah i think <clears throat> i think complexity uh, is indeed uh, i think uh, a key ingredient the ingredient uh, of the next normal right I think, uh, and I'm very happy to hear from Nicola that we are past COVID. That makes me feel much better. Um, so, so we really look into a bright future then. No, I mean, no, we have been preaching the, 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 the transformation towards um, digital for years, not to say a, a decade. I think the transformation has happened without us really doing much during the last two months. I think many companies in various industries find themselves post COVID-19 in the digital edge. And in the digital world, data are the key elements, the key ingredients are pivotal to taking advantage of taking advantage for taking advantage of, of, of the digital, um, of the digital edge. The way I think people need to deal with it is not to necessarily always try to consolidate everything into one place. I think com you know, complexity, like eventually uh, COVID-19, is something we just need to learn to live with. And to live with complexity means that you build an architecture which will allow you to seamlessly access data that eventually live and resist in different places without compromising on the information that you're able to extract. Again, coming back to your previous question, without compromising on security. Therefore, I think the new normal or the next normal will be a hybrid environment, will be multi-cloud, will be a combination of on-prem and cloud and eventually a new deployment, a deployment model to come in the next five to 10 years. So I think the key to success, as I said, is really to deal with it, found, find a way to basically remove um, barriers and, um, and really make things accessible seamlessly uh, at the highest level of security. Thank you, Hans Peter. Nicholas, how is Digital Switzerland helping um, its members to overcome all the hurdles or some of the hurdles uh, that they are confronted with because of COVID-19? And as Hans Peter says, you know, these are here to stay. Whether it has to do with you know how we work, how we do business, everything has changed and will probably stay here, if not um, all of it, but partly, definitely. So give us some examples or some uh, insights as to how Digital Switzerland is uh, helping overcome these um, new normals. I believe the future is hybrid. It's not, it's not going to be only digital, digital everything won't be, it's not fun. Uh, but we will 
we will not go back to the world which we had until February 2020. So our belief is everything will be hybrid, so more digital and still analog. Um, and, and this is somewhere also our mission to make sure uh, Switzerland, uh, it's, it's about Switzerland in a first instance. So Switzerland as a country for the economy and, uh, um, and the society always, of course, um, will keep a, a leading role in the next decade. So that's all about it. How can we do that? We, the, first, the first things we do is sensibilize people. Ma ma many, I, I believe many corporates and startups, they understand what is all about digital transformation, um, what is all about technology and, and human beings and together, no problem. But unfortunately, many of the people are not there yet. They're really not there yet. And we, we need to take the entire country. Um, also, you know, SME employees sometimes or senior people or people living outside of cities, just to, to uh, give some examples, are maybe less uh, digital oriented and we need to explain them. So the first kind of projects we do is sensibilize people, companies and inhabitants of the country. And the second part is activation, activate uh, these companies and these people without going too much into details, but by doing projects, putting companies together or the digital day where we bring the, the population on different places, we try to activate them. One example concrete, activating, for example, all the people to download and use uh, Twint as a payment system or using a Swiss AID as a way of logging into tools. Just a very simple uh, uh, examples. This is what we call activation. And it's still a long way. And we are both on it, sensibilize and activate company, academia, and finally the society. If I, if I may add to what Nicholas just said, I think it's very true and I very much agree with, with, with everything Nicholas was just saying. I mean, digital or everything that we now are getting exposed to is going to be an add-on to what has already existed before. So things are not replacing one another, but they're complementing one another. And we have to deal with it or our customers have to deal with it without being limited by silos that have historically been built. And one example I want to make is one of the, you know, major retailers in Switzerland, right? Until beginning of COVID-19, their online business represented 2% of the group revenue. In April, the online business has grown to 25% of, of the group revenue. Now, the 75% is still traditional, so this cannot be ignored, cannot be just kind of put aside. But the 25% are big enough to enjoy high priority, enjoy focus, and eventually enjoy the necessary investments and deserve the necessary investment in order to become sustainable. And that's not only important for the front office for let's say an e-commerce portal that's actually going back to the supply chain i was actually trying to use this online service unfortunately i received the delivery date which was 14 days later now i think it's is obvious you know we cannot live with 14 days lead time to deliver grocery but that shows the challenges with the introduction of digital, that it's not limited to the front end, but it very much goes into the back end and into the supply as well. And it's a coexistence. One is not replacing the other, and we just have to learn, and our customers have to learn to live with it. Interesting, Hans Peter, what you're saying. Uh, you know, no invent sort of uh, supply chain or e-commerce uh, situation we are far from that but what I hear from both of you is that um, you know what happens whatever digital transformation abruptly happened because of COVID-19 or will continue to happen it has a lot of ripple effects 
So it can't be done in isolation. If one company, one business, one sector does it, it doesn't work. Everybody has to come up the curve, of course at different speeds, but it has to happen because not everything is interconnected. All the businesses, whether it's finance, whether it's retail, services, everything depends on each other. So we, we have to find that balance that we've been talking about that's really about a cohesive and sustainable uh, way. And it seems to me that um, the cloud is playing a, a very important role in all uh, this. Hans Peter, is, is that correct? Is, it, is the cloud, the, the, the infrastructure, the backbone that is going to help us move in, in that um, direction? And also you, Nicolas, is that what you're seeing from Swiss company? Are they changing their data management practices, their other business processes? Is that the direction? I think well, this, is what it, this is what it really is. It is the backbone and it is the infrastructure. It is not less, but it is also not more. You know, a company would be misled if they were being told or make believe that with the introduction of cloud, you know, they, everything would change. I think only what you make of it is actually leading to change. The way you start using it, the way you actually are going to adjust your processes in order to best possibly drive agility is going to introduce change. It reminds me of 20 years ago when basically there was the e-commerce wave flooding the globe and everybody thought, well, if I, if I build a e-commerce portal, I will basically take part of the e-commerce world, which we all know was not the case. The same I think it is with cloud. Cloud is a pivotal part of moving into the next normal, but cloud itself will not move you to the next normal. Nicholas, is, is that uh, what you, you Digital Switzerland is all about, about you know, changing the narrative and, and making Switzerland really understand how to use these infrastructures, be it the cloud or, or any other of the future technologies, AI um, weaved into the cloud. Is that really the big mission that you are after? Definitely, and Hans Peter said very well, um, technology itself is, is not the change. It's not the end of the journey we want to reach. Technology is just a meme. At the end of the day, it's about processes, it's about culture, and it's about us, it's about people and organization to change. Technology is really there, is the enabler, not more than that. Uh, but if you don't have, if you're not on the right enabler, or on the right fundamentals, how do you want to change your culture, your company, and the mindset? It doesn't work. So that's why we need you know, to, to embrace, to be, to be open-minded about these new enablers, like the cloud, for example, and just to take this one, and you said yourself earlier very well, uh, Effie, there are huge differences in speeds of implementation in such a small place as Switzerland. So you can figure out in bigger countries. Uh, if you look at, again, innovative corporates and startups, they are in the, in the fast train already inside there and going fast. But many other parts of Switzerland, they are not there yet. And we have to be careful with the digital transformation. There will be always some winners, that's okay, of course, but to be careful that the losers or the, or the people, the companies behind, don't stay too much behind. We want to take them with us. It's at the end of the day, it's about the entire economy also in our mission. Yeah, I think I that's think it. What's yeah, really right. different those days, I, I think we have always seen change, right? Undisputably. I think what's different is really the speed. The speed of change. Um, everything changes at, at the speed of light at the moment. 
And I think that's the biggest challenge. Uh, I mean, just another example, right? For instance, the last two months, cash withdrawal from ATMs worldwide have gone down by 60%, six zero. 75% of the population is using less cash and 50% of the population claim predominantly to live in a cashless world. Now this brings very new challenges. Um, also to a very traditional industry like the banks, right? Because eventually the last innovation in the banking industry was the introduction of the ATM. Um, and ever since they are trying to benefit from it. But we all know that all, you know, less than 30% of all the ATM uh, machines are profitable. Now with those changes, the cost on the ATM infrastructure is even uh, to be more of a burden to the banks. So, I mean, those are all changes, right, which, which happen in, in, in a very short time period, which requires us to be, you know, mentally, personally, extremely agile, but to have a technology foundation into place that allows us to implement and apply change very, very quickly. And I think this is where cloud plays an increasingly important role. Yes, it's true, as, as uh, Nicole also mentioned, we must make sure that we have a data management uh, layer in place that is actually, you know, is actually spread across all the different deployment models that are still in use. Uh, and with this, I think at least, you know, as you said, we build the infrastructure and we put the backbone in place to deal with it without, again, being too much um, hindered by by the silos which are there, right? They cannot just be removed uh, as such. What I'm hearing from both of you is that um, maybe COVID-19 has helped us uh, sort of lower the barrier of this big silo that uh, we human beings have against technology. We fear um, technology, we fear the, the future technologies, some organizations fear them even more and it's lowered that barrier and it's helped us look at technology with a different perspective which is um, making it a friend making it uh, you know an enabler really um, and and as as you said Hans Peter it's it's what we do with the technology it's our intention uh, on how we use it it's not a magic wand um, and, and if you think of it today with all the, the APIs, uh, uh, software as a service models, all these offerings, anybody can do anything. So the secret sauce is what is your intention, how it aligns with your business strategy, what, what you're aiming to do. So I think that this era has brought all these closer and has forced us to think about this. Uh, we can't avoid talking about health issues because obviously that's been our top priority over this um, uh, past two months of, of the lockdown. Uh, there's one initiative uh, that I saw that Digital Switzerland is, is, it's under the umbrella of Digital Switzerland. Health, do, do you want to tell us about it, uh, Nicholas, what is it and how is that fitting in how digital Switzerland is, is helping the ecosystem uh, with breaking the silos and bringing uh, um, technology to empower people and businesses? So uh, this, this project, Health Youth, is a great example how to collaborate. Um, of course, each company has a strategy, that's clear. Each company has own interest, that's normal. Uh, and companies are competitors in the same field, everything good and fine. On the top of it, there might be some, some great opportunities to collaborate. And we believe these, these alliances or collaboration will also be part of success, successful companies in the future. And Health Dude is a, is a great example in the health sector uh, to prevent um, productivity losses due to health issues, which is just in a small, in our tiny 
a country more than six billions uh, loss per year, which is a, a big loss of the, of the economy in general. And, and I love this, this, uh, this structure, this project, because it's showing Oracle as one of the leaders on it and with other companies from other sectors, maybe unthinkable some years ago to work together, they will tackle the challenge of productivity loss due to health issues. And that's a great example how to collaborate and solve issues together. And our role is to enable it, to push it, and hopefully help to make it happen. Great, great. I, I'd like to thank you for sharing your insights uh, on this uh, front. Obviously, we have scratched only the surface. We could talk a lot more about um, these complex issues, but um, I think that I want to keep some of your ideas um, uh, to, to share them at our upcoming uh, digital roundtable on uh, the 26th of May, which is going to be focused on um, business continuity uh, and digital um, issues in Switzerland and always looking at cross-industry insights and how to bring people together to share experiences, challenges, and opportunities. I think this time, the biggest benefit that we have had from COVID-19 lockdown and all the challenges is that we have come together and closer. What do you think? It's interesting, I mean, I mean, we, we all talk about social distancing, right? I think this is uh, probably the wrongest possible term you can use um, because I agree on the necessity of physical distancing. But I think we have been socially closer than ever because I think we are communicating much more than we have ever been before. I think um, the current situation is moving uh, people eventually physically a bit uh, apart from each other, but I think socially it helps us to connect. Um, we're in the same boat. We all you know, work with the same challenges, but I also believe strongly we have the same opportunities, especially when we, you know, across the board uh, are trying to take advantage of the new possibilities of this next normal. Thank you, Hans-Peter. Nicolas, how do you feel about this? I I believe solidarity will, will increase, definitely. On the short term, we were rather more distant to each other. Uh, we've learned how to communicate per video conference and an audio conference, which is nice, but not always cool, and not only, not only. Uh, so I think we're all happy to go back and meet people. But I believe the future will be more, uh, show more solidarity. And I believe, I hope, uh, we still want to, you know, to, to change the world, to move things, make profits. It won't disappear. But at the same time, I hope, I believe, we will think more about the environment and sustainability of the earth, of everything around us, because we've seen how important it is. Thank you so much, both of you, for sharing um, your insights and taking time out of your busy schedule. Thank you, Evie. Thank you, Evie.